not only because there is contained in the Eucharist that which the life of every man has most deeply. Our Lord Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity is contained in the Eucharist. Anti-Pope John Paul II says that what is contained in the Eucharist, the life of every man has most deeply. This clearly means that each man has the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ. Anti-Pope John Paul II, Redemptor Hominis number 20. The Eucharist is the sacrament in which our new being is most completely expressed. Anti-Pope John Paul II preaches that each man is the crucified Christ. Anti-Pope John Paul II homily, June 11, 1982. When we look at the cross, we see in it the passion of man, the agony of Christ. Anti-Pope John Paul II address, March 28, 1982. My pastoral visit so near to Holy Week thus becomes a meditation on the passion of Christ and on the passion of man. Anti-Pope John Paul II on the meaning of suffering number 20. Man discovering through faith the redemptive suffering of Christ also discovers in it his own sufferings. Man does not discover his own sufferings in Christ's sufferings because man is not Christ. But this is what the Antichrist is preaching. Anti-Pope John Paul II speech in the Colosseum, April 10th, 1998. As we contemplate Christ dead on the cross, our thoughts turn to the countless injustices and sufferings which prolong his passion in every part of the world. I think of the places where man is insulted. When we contemplate Christ dead on the cross, we don't think of the places where man is insulted because man is not the crucified Christ. Anti-Pope John Paul II, General Audience, January 12, 1994. Even though St. Paul reminds us that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again, Christ continues to die. Christ continues his agony in so many of our brothers and sisters, and so many Christians and Muslims, and believers and non-believers. Anti-Pope John Paul II begins by admitting that Christ will never die again, Romans 6, verse 9. He then tells us that death continues to be a part of human existence. He then proceeds to tell us that Christ continues to die in the Balkans in Muslims and Christians, in believers and non-believers. His train of thought is not difficult to follow. Though Christ will never die again, man still dies. Thus Christ dies because man is Christ. He even stresses that Christ dies in Muslims and non-believers, which definitely shows that he preaches that every man is Jesus Christ. Anti-Pope John Paul II, homily, October 1st, 1999. He, Emmanuel, God with us, was crucified in the concentration camps and the gulags. He knew affliction under bombardment in the trenches. He suffered wherever the inalienable dignity of man, of every human being, was humiliated, oppressed, and violated. The term Emmanuel, God with us, is very specific. It applies to one person. Our Lord Jesus Christ is Emmanuel, Isaiah 7 verse 14, Matthew 1 verse 23. And our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified once for our sins. By describing each man as Emmanuel, Anti-Pope John Paul II is specifically indicating that each man is God with us. It is quite obvious that Anti-Pope John Paul II preaches that every man is the crucified Christ, the Savior of the world, but there is one place in his encyclical Evangelium Vitae that is particularly interesting on this topic. Anti-Pope John Paul II Evangelium Vitae number 50.2 Speaking of the darkness on Good Friday, but the glory of the cross is not overcome by this darkness. Rather, it shines forth ever more radiantly and brightly and is revealed as the center, meaning, and goal of all history and of every human life. Here, anti-Pope John Paul II says that the glory of the cross is revealed as the meaning of every human life. Keep this in mind as we read the next quote from Evangelium Vitae. Anti-Pope John Paul II, Evangelium Vitae, number 50.3. It is thus, at the moment of his greatest weakness, that the Son of God is revealed for who he is. On the cross his glory is made manifest. Here, Anti-Pope John Paul II tells us that by the glory of the cross, 
The Son of God is revealed for who he is. But he just told us one paragraph before this that the glory of the cross is the meaning of every human life. This means by way of logical equation that the Son of God equals the meaning of every human life. To illustrate this, we will look again at his words. The glory of the cross is the meaning of every human life. Evangelium Vitae 50.2 The glory of the cross reveals the Son of God. Evangelium Vitae 50.3 Conclusion, the Son of God is the meaning of every human life. Antipope John Paul II preaches that man is indeed God. Antipope John Paul II, Ecclesian America, number 29. Prayer leads Christians little by little to acquire a contemplative view of reality, to contemplate God in every person. Antipope John Paul II, homily, August 10, 1985. Today, in consecrating your cathedral, we ardently desire that it become a true temple of God and man. This quotation proves that Antipope John Paul II preaches the worship of man as God by calling for the transformation of the temple of God into a temple of God and man. Antipope John Paul II Homily, August 9, 1980 The first and principal intention of every organization and every state Respect and love for man. Anti-Pope John Paul II Address, April 13, 1979. The conscience of all humanity, which proclaims the cause of man as the main purpose of all progress. Anti-Pope John Paul II Address to University Teachers, September 9, 2000. Each of you could say with the ancient philosopher, I am searching for man. Anti-Pope John Paul II Homily, January 1, 1986. It is necessary for man to be sure of man. Anti-Pope John Paul II Homily, June 21, 1986 Yes, man. The church does not rest as long as man is threatened in his dignity. Anti-Pope John Paul II Message to Conference on Culture, March 10, 1986 The East and the West could be combined to develop a truly universal and humanitarian outlook based on faith in man. Anti-Pope John Paul II Angelus Address, April 20, 1980. Man is offended and humiliated. Man, the sublime creature of God, who cannot, who must not be offended. Remember, just as Nestorius preached that Jesus Christ is two persons, the Son of God and a man named Jesus, so does Anti-Pope John Paul II preach that every man is two persons, the Son of God and a mere man. This is why he can speak in one sentence about man being a creature of God, while at the same time he indicates that man is God, who cannot, who must not be offended. Anti-Pope John Paul II preaches that man is the man from above. In John chapter 8 verse 23 we read the following, And he, Jesus, said to them, You are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore I said to you, that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sin. In this profound verse of St. John's Gospel, our Lord Jesus Christ describes himself as the one from above. He describes man as the one from below. Keep this in mind as we read the following words of the Antichrist. Antipope John Paul II, homily, March 30, 1982. Looking at himself, man discovers also, as Christ says in the dialogue with the Pharisees, what is from below and what is from above. Man discovers within himself. This is a constant experience, the man from below and the man from above. Not two men, but almost two dimensions of the same man, the man that is each one of us, I, you, he, she. Here, Antipope John Paul II tells us with almost astonishing boldness that each man is the man from above and the man from below. But in the very passage that Antipope John Paul II is commenting on, Christ's dialogue with the Pharisees in John chapter 8, verse 23, Jesus defines himself as the one from above and man as the one from below. It is undeniable that Antipope John Paul II is saying that each man, each one of us is also Christ, the man from above.